Welcome to the Arabesque Sewing Studio. Now today I have a really fun bag tutorial to show you. So I'm going to be sewing the Stylish Sewing Tote by Zucker Workshop. Now this is a really fun tote bag with external pockets and a rigid wire frame that holds the neck of the bag open. So this gives it its vintage doctor's style bag uh, look that is just so appealing and it's so functional. So if you've not seen one of these before, you'll see when I open it up that the bag opens lovely and wide in a box shape which holds itself open. So you don't need to be frustrated as you're trying to put things in and out with your bag collapsing. So last year was my first introduction to sewing with a bag frame and I made the Stylish Sewing Caddy which is the baby sister of the Stylish Sewing Tote. So you can read all about this on my blog, I'll put the link in the description below and you can see the mods that I did for this bag and today I'm going to be taking you through how to sew this bag and also the mods that I added for this. Now this is a really roomy tote bag that you can use for craft as an afternoon bag or just stuffing a few things in if you're going away for the weekend. It's a really roomy shape and it's got some cool external pockets. Now the pattern from Zucker Workshop comes with the wire frames and the ring pull zip. So all you have to do is decide on the perfect fabric you're going to sew your bag with. I have sewn this in the very happy festive prairie Christmas line by Poppy Cotton. And I think you'll agree it's made a very happy bag. Now if you love educational sewing videos that help you grow in your confidence and improve your sewing skills, I'd love you to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button. When I sew this pattern, I have modified it slightly. So I'm going to take you through the things that I've changed today. So I have shortened the handles just a little bit and I have added some faux leather accents. Now this is a really fun and easy trick that you can use to add a real preppy, smart look to your projects. So the handles are in faux leather and I've also added a uh, faux leather trim across both sides of the pockets and some rivets. So once you've learned to handle vinyl, which is really not very difficult, there's only a few tips you really need to know. This is a great skill that you can take to other projects to add your own flair and style. So whether you are a seasoned bag maker or just getting started on your bag making journey, I'd love you to follow along with me today. So let's get started. So I'll just run through the supplies that you're going to need for this. So I like to have a couple of pairs of scissors a larger pair and a smaller pair uh, just for getting into smaller places. I've cut everything out here with a rotary cutter and of course you can use scissors if you would like but I find rotary cutting out with a ruler uh, just really helps everything to stay nice and precise. I've got a couple of fabric pens so that uh, we can mark the places on the fabric that need to get placed. I've got a stiletto, I've got a seam ripper because you're actually going to need this uh, not for a mistake but for ripping a little part of the pattern. I've got a lighter which I use for burning the ends of my polyester thread. I've got some glue for glue basting and because I'm going to be sewing with vinyl today I've got a couple of uh, pieces uh, rolls of tape. I've got some sticky tape and some double-sided leather tape and because you can't pin vinyl because it will leave a hole then you need to find other ways of sticking this down in place when you're ready to sew it. And I've got a ruler for marking the marks that we need to mark and I've got some coordinating thread uh, to match my fabric and I've got some top stitching thread uh, for sewing the vinyl. And I've also got some binding clips and you can use pins as well just for holding all the layers together. So this bag has its lovely structure coming from fusible fleece that is added as a layer to all the fabric. And I love adding this as an effect to a bag. It just gives a lovely plush and charming effect. And one of the things that I like to do when I'm sewing a bag is always add a layer of SF101 or woven fusible interfacing. And that just, uh, particularly if you're going to be sewing with a cotton woven fabric, uh, this just adds a layer of extra structure and stops the whole project stretching as it's used. 
So as you are going to be carrying a bag by the handles and putting some weight in there, it doesn't take very long before a bag starts to just stretch out of shape and get a little bit dishevelled. So I'm just going to run through all the pieces that I've got cut out here. So this fabric is the main body of the pattern and this is this piece here that you can see on the top side of the bag and goes down behind the pockets. This is going to be the sides of the bag. So this is the part here that you can see is folded over here. So this stands up on the edge of the bag when the bag is open. This is going to be my pockets. So the pockets are sewn folded in half. So this starts with a larger piece that's then folded in half. And this is going to be the base of my bag. And the base has a layer of heavyweight fusible interfacing added to this, which just gives the base uh, some really good heavy structure so that it's not going to sag when you've put stuff inside. Now I've got some vinyl here today that I'm going to be using for the handles. And I've got some extra little um, strips of trim that I'm going to be adding to the top edge of the pockets. These are the pieces for the lining. And when I cut a lining, I typically like to use a very light colored fabric uh, so that I can see everything inside the bag uh, when I'm using it. I'm also going to be adding in some rivets uh, to my handles. And this just gives a really lovely tailored effect to the bag uh, when you add in some extra hardware like this. So to add a rivet, you're going to need um, a rivet setter or a rivet press, something that's going to be able to put these in place for you. So the first step I'm going to do here is I'm going to take my woven fusible interfacing and fuse that to the wrong side of all, the, all of the panels to start with. So you're going to center that on the wrong side of the fabric with the sticky side down and fuse that into place. And then you're going to do that to all the pieces that you can on the exterior. And when we come to the pockets here, we're going to start by folding this in half and creasing this like so long ways. So then you're going to take your fusible interfacing and line that up to the fold line that you've made there. Fuse that in place and then take the fusible fleece and fuse that on top of that. I'm also going to fuse this heavyweight interfacing onto the base and I'll meet you back here. So now we're going to construct the handles for this bag and I'm using vinyl for this. Now if you're going to use woven cotton fabric uh, for yours, I really do recommend you add a layer of extra interfacing to your handles before you add the fleece. Uh, just so that they don't stretch. So this is how you are going to prepare vinyl if you're going to use this. So the construction's still the same, except you can't iron it. So I'm just going to mark a line up the middle. So then you're going to fold the outer edge into that inner line and clip it in place. So just go ahead and clip all the way up. So when you've done that, you're going to flip it around and you're going to fold the remaining edge into that marked line and clip that all the way down as well. So then you're going to fold the whole lot in half and do a hot dog fold and Flip these folded edges together. So just work your way along the whole edge here. So you just repeat that for the second handle. So now we're going to take both of these to the sewing machine and I'm going to be stitching around the entire exterior edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance 
I'm going to be using my top stitching thread for this and increasing my seam allowance to about four millimeters so that you get a nice decorative long stitch that looks really attractive. So here's our finished handles and they look really good. So now you're going to grab both of the body pieces of your bag. So I need to mention that if you're going to use directional fabric, you need to be paying attention that your fabric is up the right way and that the base is going to be at the bottom of the fabric the way you want it to display. And then you're going to mark the center on the short edge just by folding it in half you can do this with a marking pen if you would like but you can just snip a tiny little triangle off the middle of that and then repeat that for the other piece so you grab your marker and you're going to mark two inches either side of the center of that mark that you made now the pattern calls for marking three and a half inches up into the center of the bag. And I'm actually going to mark a little bit higher than that because I would like my handles to attach um, a little bit higher up the bag so that they don't sag down when the bag is open. So I'm gonna mark five and a half inches up from the bottom and just place a mark there on each side. So if you've got fabric handles that you've sewn, you're going to go ahead and take one short edge. You're going to align the outer exterior edge of the fold here with the outer edge of the line. And then you're going to pin that in place until you reach that mark that you've made there on the bag. Then you'll take the other end of the handle and you'll repeat that lining that outer edge with the outer edge of the mark here and the short edge level with the base of the bag and pin that in place up to there. Now, because I can't pin my vinyl, I'm going to take a piece of tape and tape this down just on the exterior of this mark and then put another piece in place here And then just pull the tape off. Just making sure I've got the right side of the handle facing up. So align that with that outer edge and stick that in place, making sure that everything is nice and straight with the edge there. Making sure my, my handle is not twisted and then coming around and aligning this edge with that outer edge. making sure that this is nice and straight. So then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch just inside the stitching line that I've already done because I don't want to uh, double stitch on my vinyl because that's going to weaken it. So I'll stitch just inside here all the way up to this mark that we've got here on the fabric. Then you stitch across and then come back down just inside that stitching line down to the bottom and then repeat that for the other side. So let's take both of these to the sewing machine and we're going to top stitch this in place with our nice top stitching thread and our four millimeter stitch length.
So then we're going to take these two pieces and set them aside. So now you're going to take your pocket pieces. So these are the pieces that we have folded in half. And then I have pressed the interfacing up to the fold here and then press the layer of fusible fleece up to this layer as well. So the next thing I'm going to do to this is add a decorative layer of vinyl trim to the top edge of this. So this is going to clip on like this and then when we've stitched it and finished it, it's going to wrap around and give a nice edging effect. So what you're going to do here, I have cut two strips of vinyl that is one and a half inches wide and a little bit longer than um, the length of the pocket here. Uh, just so that you don't have to be super accurate with lining it up. So then you're going to place that right sides together on the edge of the folded pocket here. And grab some clips and then just clip that in place all the way down here. So just repeat that for the second one. So then we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch along this folded edge of the pocket and stitch the vinyl to the top and I'm going to use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So then take your stitched edge and you're going to push on that seam and just Flatten that edge out. It's not going to stay flat, but you can give it a bit of a finger press like that. Then I'm going to take that edge and roll it around to the back. And what I'm after here is for this edge to cover the line of stitching by, and mine is actually covering by a couple of millimeters here. So it's a fairly good amount of coverage. So then you're just going to clip your way along here and you want to get this edge nice and even so you can use plenty of clips here just check that you're happy with both sides that it is looking even because what's going to happen when you um, take this and top stitch it this is this edge is going to flatten out and if you've got it a little bit uneven this is going to show up then now go ahead and clip the second piece. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch right along the inner edge of this folded edge with my top stitching thread at a nice four millimeter stitch length. And we're going to be catching the back of this inside on that seam allowance. So make sure that this is covering that stitching line so that this is going to catch in place when you sew it down. So I've got both of these top stitched now. This is nicely caught on the back and this is looking really, really cute. So if you would like to try this, I'd love you to leave a comment below and let me know how you go. Now the one thing to remember if you are going to add any vinyl trim to your bag you're going to have to be very careful when you press the bag to not touch this uh, with the iron or you're going to melt it. So now I'm going to take these pieces back to the sewing machine and I'm going to baste these raw edges together um, at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now the next step in the pattern is to attach your pocket section to the body of the bag. So this is just going to sit on the bottom section here, lining up, and we're going to be joining this along the bottom and then dividing this pocket into three little mini pockets that are evenly spaced. So I'm going to actually add a little rivet to the top of my decorative trim right at the top of the line of stitching that we're going to do. So I'm going to just mark this on the pocket 
before I attach it to the bag. So you're going to mark across three and a half inches and three and a half inches from the right side. And what I want to do when I stitch down, I don't want to stitch through my rivet. So I'm going to just mark nice and straight here in the center of my decorative trim up here and here as well and then I'm just going to punch my hole for my rivet even though I'm not ready to set it so you can do this uh, with your awl if you've only got a pointy tool so just punch through all of that just making sure you've got that in the center So then I'm going to mark that stitching line directly underneath the hole that I've punched. And now we can clip this to the body of the bag. So then you're going to repeat that for the second section. So now we're going to take these to the sewing machine and we're going to baste around the bottom edge of these three sides and then we're going to top stitch down these marked lines. Now if you've got um, vinyl in your project that I've used, this is a little bit bulky here. So you're going to probably want to put on a zipper foot and I'm not going to be stitching right up here into the vinyl so that um, because I don't want to break my stitches when I'm putting my rivet in. If you uh, don't have this decorative trim, you're going to be stitching right up to the top. So now the pocket is assembled to the main body and we've got the little section stitched. I'm just going to mark the placement for the decorative rivet that I'm going to be putting on the handle here. So I'm just going to place this centered just underneath this top row of stitching that I've stitched here. And then I'm just going to punch that before we go any further. So now I'm just going to make sure that uh, my hole is going right through to the back of the body of the bag here. So I'm just going to wiggle a hole here with my awl. So pushing it just directly down through that, making sure that you're not snagging the fabric as you go through. So just push it through quite gently to start with. So once you've got all of them in place, we're just going to set the rivets. So you might not have a rivet press and that's okay. You can do this with uh, the little uh, kit that you can often buy with this. So just give it a good press. So now we're ready to attach the side panels to this bag. So you're going to lay your bag right side up with the bottom edge facing you. And then you're going to place a side section on the left and the right. So if you've got a directional fabric here, pay attention to this because this is the bottom of the bag. So then you're just going to clip these right sides together. So flip it over and just put a few clips on here. 
and line everything up. And then repeat this for the second side. So then you're going to repeat that for the second panel of the bag. So now we're ready to take both these panels to the sewing machine and we're going to be stitching down each of these seams at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now you're going to take your stitched panel and we're going to open up these seams and just give it a finger press and then give it a good press with the iron. Now if you've got vinyl on your uh, bag like I do, you're going to want to make sure you avoid directly pressing the vinyl. So one of these little irons is just really handy for doing this kind of thing. So now you're going to repeat that for this second panel. So now we've got a piece of fusible fleece that needs to be applied to the wrong side of the bag. So take your piece of fusible fleece and lay it so that the sticky side is down and center that within the bag. Now you might find that just the way the bag has naturally just uh, shrunk up a little bit but this is a little bit too um, big at the moment. So what you're going to want to do, because we can't fuse directly on this, I'm going to align it within the seam allowance just on the right hand side here. Then I'm going to flip it. And just check that I've still got that where I want it. And I'm going to start fusing from the right side, just on this side panel here. Then I'm going to flip it back over and I'm going to just push it up and move it where I want it to be. And within the seam allowance, then flip it back over Then I'm going to fuse this side of the panel. So then I'm going to work my way along and just stretch all of this out so that everything's going to sit nice and flat. Now because I've got vinyl, I'm just going to have to work my way carefully just around this handle here, just making sure that I'm not directly contacting that. You can get a little bit of heat onto vinyl. Uh, it doesn't mind getting hot, it just doesn't want any extreme heat. So just pay attention to that. And then you can just come here from this side. So you can also use a pressing cloth on the wrong side. So the part that I haven't been able to get into. I'm just going to cover with my pressing cloth so that I can make sure this side gets nicely fused as well. So that's looking really cute. So now we've got both of our panels uh, prepared with the fusible fleece on the back. Now you might like to add a decorative row of top stitching down each side of this uh, side where the panel joins. Uh, that would be a really cute thing to add in. So grab the base which has got the very heavy interfacing attached to it. Now I'm going to uh, quilt some lines through this. So you can do as many or as little lines on this as you would like. I'm just going to quilt a very basic X on this today. The next step in the pattern is to insert the base between the two main body panels of the bag. Now, actually, I'm actually going to leave this 
uh, to the next step so that we don't have to be wrangling that uh, very stiff base while we're inserting the zip. So you're going to take your zip and you're going to fold this in half and I'm going to mark the centers of the zip on each side. So I'm just going to tuck these handles out of the way into the little middle pocket just so they're not getting in the way for me. Now if you haven't already marked the center of this uh, top edge, you're going to go ahead and do that as well. So we're just snipping the tiniest little V out of the top there. You don't want to uh, compromise that seam allowance too much. Just enough so that you can see it. So then you're going to lay these body panels uh, right sides up with the bases touching. And then we're going to place a mark from the edge of these side panels, one and a quarter inches up on this top edge from each of these top edges here. So what we're going to be doing is attaching the zip across here. And then as we come up to this mark, that's going to be tapering off. So just repeat this for the other side. So then you're going to take your zip with the zipper pull facing down and align the center of the zip with the center of the top edge here. And just clip your way along here. And what we're going to be doing as we come up to this mark that we've done, we're just going to be pulling that zipper away from that mark so that the zipper tape comes out of the seam allowance. And I'll show you that when we stitch it at the sewing machine. So just clip your way up to the top on this side as well. So now I'm going to take just this edge to the sewing machine and we're going to be stitching along this edge at a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance and we're going to be tapering this out of the seam so that the zipper tape is going to be leaving basically when you hit that mark you're going to be pulling that down out of the way. So I've got the first side stitched on and you can see that I've tapered this out of the seam at the top and the bottom. Now we're going to unzip the zipper and keeping this all so basically just the way it would have been as it was zipped up without twisting this I'm going to pull this edge across to the top on the other side and we're going to align that center mark here with the center mark on the zip. And then just marking on top of that mark like we did before so that you know when to taper that zip out of the seam. And then I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch along this edge at a scant quarter inch seam allowance. And when we are at these points, we're going to be tapering the zip away from the edge of the seam. So this is what things are looking like now. You should have your zip attached on both edges along the top edge. So now we're ready to attach the base. So if you haven't already marked your centers on the long edge of the bottom, go ahead and do that. So grab your base and on one long edge of the base, we're going to place that wrong side up and right sides together and align this 
center mark here and just place a few clips. So clip these edges together. Then I'm going to align the other side, right sides together with this center mark on the base of the other body panel. And put a few clips along here. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch across both of these base sections at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now we've got this base joined to the bottom of the body of the bag. So now we're going to join these side panels. So make sure that you've got this zipper out of the way and we're going to bend this base which is going to fight you a bit so just push it out of the way and show it who's boss and clip your way down these edges of these side seams and then repeat this for the second side so make sure you've got the zip pushed up out of the way. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down each of these side seams at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now we've got our side seams sewn, we're going to Keep the bag wrong side out and box the bottom of the corners. So I'm going to align this center mark on the base with the side seam on the side of the bag and just clip this together. Now what I like to do for this is just clip into the body of the bag here. You can probably see it's bending a little bit here. Just going to pull that out and just clip a little bit into that side seam just to open things out just a little bit. We're not gonna clip all the way up to that edge but just so that we can get in here with another clip. So just repeat that over here just to get this to sit a little bit flatter. Now we're going to repeat this with the other side. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down each of these side edges on the base at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now we're ready to sew the lining of this bag together. So we've got two lining side panels here, nice long ones, and then we've got a lining base here. So what I'm going to do is just fold everything on the long edges and mark these centers just by giving a little tiny clip and then repeat that for these long lining sides as well. Now, if you're going to be adding an inner pocket uh, to these pieces, you're going to follow the instructions for that. I'm going to be skipping my inner pocket today. So what we're going to do now is take one lining section I'm going to take the base and we're going to align this right sides together along one of these long edges and we're going to match up these middle notches that we've just cut and 
Just pin this in place. So now we're ready to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down this pinned edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So just grab your lining piece and give this a press. Now we're going to take the second piece of lining and we're going to place that right sides up and then we're going to align the other side of this base with the notched edge meeting on this notched edge so this is centered on here so just align these raw edges and pop a few pins in now let's take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch across this edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance Now just press this second piece on your lining. So then we're going to lay one side panel right side up and place the second panel matching up the top edge and the short edges here. And we're just going to mark an opening on the edge here. So the pattern tells you to leave a five inch gap so just center that roughly over this, this edge here. And we're just going to pop a few pins in here. And repeat this for the second side. So now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down this left hand edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to stitch down the right hand edge and we're going to stop when we get to this mark and start again when we get to this mark this is just going to leave an opening for turning the bag right side out then I'm just going to reach in with my iron and just iron these side seams you're pressing these seams open now we're going to sew up the two remaining bottom edges of the bag so with your bag lying like this so the wrong side is up and the two side seams are here we're just going to bring these two open edges together and just tug on them and get them so the raw edges are going to match up and just pop a few pins along here. Then just repeat this for the second opening on the other side. Now we're going to take this to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down each of these seams at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now we're ready to stitch the lining into the bag. So we're going to turn this so the bag is right side out. And then we're going to take the lining with the lining wrong side out. And we're going to place the whole bag inside the lining so that they are right sides together. Make sure the handles are all tucked in. Now just pull everything up. Now we're going to be tucking this zip in, down, onto the exterior of the fabric. And I'm going to be aligning the side seam of the bag with the side seam on the lining. I'm clipping that together. Then coming around to the other side, just pushing those two zipper tails here down onto the exterior of the bag and then aligning the side seam on the bag with the side seam. So then just move your way to the center 
of the bag with the center of the zippies and line that up with the center mark on the lining and clip this together and then repeat that with the other side of the zipper put a clip on so then you're just going to work your way around clipping everything together stretching it all out and getting these raw edges along the edge of the zip ear here all lining up so now we've got this whole lining and bag exterior clipped together I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and stitch around this top edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance and this is where the bag is quite bulky so just take your time here just squish everything down and in under the sewing machine just stitch really slowly and just make sure that everything is not pulling as you're going around and that you're in control of that seam line staying nice and straight Now I do apologize my camera wasn't on when I filmed turning the bag right side out which of course is always the most exciting part because you get to see basically the finished bag for the first time. So anyway I used the opening that we left here and pulled everything right side out and then I have given the zip a really good press along this top edge and what you want to do is just do a little experimental close here just to check that everything is uh, lining up and nothing's twisted, everything's working properly. So the final thing that we need to do here, other than create the little uh, zipper tabs for the ends of the zips here, is to sew the channels that are going to hold the frames that give the bag this nice uh, rigid structure. So what we want to do here is sew a channel just a half an inch below the top seam edge, so the seam that where the zipper is coming out, a half an inch below that, we're going to sew a channel all the way around the exterior. And this is going to show on the outside of the bag. So you need to consider the color of your top stitching here uh, because this is going to show. So we're going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew at a half an inch away from the edge of this zipper here. So now I've stitched this channel around the edge of the bag and while I was there I also closed up the opening in the lining. So remember that I said we need our seam ripper so we're actually going to unpick this little half inch of seam here just between this row of stitching and the top edge of the bag. So just carefully reach your seam ripper in between these stitches and then just pull them apart just to create just enough of an opening that you can get the edge of the frame inserting through there. So just repeat this for the other side as well. So grab the first frame and we're going to feed that in through that opening around this top edge of the bag until the whole frame is inside. And you can just see already that that's taking up that nice rigid structure and flip that around and we're going to feed this second one in through the other side oops lost the little end off my just pop that back on 
So now we're ready to train this bag to sit the way we want it when it's shut. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. You can uh, do it like it is in the photo where you get quite a flat and compact looking bag. I actually like mine staying just a little bit more um, floppy looking. I'm not going to be overly shaping this. Just give it a bit of a shake. Make sure that the base is all pressed down the way that you would like. So I'm going to take this and give it another press really carefully, of course, so that I don't um, melt my vinyl. And then I'm going to be adding these zipper tabs in. But I am really pleased with this. This is a lovely, sturdy, quite roomy bag that is perfect for filling with yarn, crafty projects, all kinds of works in progress that you might like to take with you or even just keep next to you and your stitching on the couch.